Thank you for joining us for Breaking Down the Barriers on KZI 88.7. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter at AISD underscore BDB. You can also watch us on AISD's Channel 22 on Tuesday and Thursday at 7.30 p.m. and Sunday mornings at 10.30 a.m. As always, Breaking Down the Barriers is committed to bringing you the best news, resources, and tools to ensure that each and every one of our students is successful. Our first guest today is Ms. Quivette Terrell, Teacher of the Year. Ms. Quivette, we're so glad you can be with us today. I'm really happy to be here. Thanks for inviting me. Why don't you tell us a little bit about your story and what made you go into teaching? Okay, um, I'm from the south side of San Antonio. I have a twin brother, uh, his name is Detrick, and um, my brother and I, we were born three months premature, so um, we were born in the county hospital, and then we were sent to uh, Santa Rosa, Rosa Hospital to, for the NICU unit. One of the nurses aides there, which is Joyce Terrell, who is now my mother, um, saw the hope she always says in my eyes, and she adopted me and my brother. Um, she was oh. almost in her 50s, and my dad was well into his 60s, and they already had two kids. Um, we didn't have a lot of money. But mom's whole thing was if we have to eat bread and drink water, we're gonna eat bread and drink water together. And she raised us um, having faith and doing the best that we can. And even though you may struggle in your life, you always find strength through the struggle. You always learn how to persevere. And mom instilled that to my brother and I. And having that kind of hope and you know, a stranger having that kind of hope inside me is what drove me to go into teaching because that's what teachers do for students all the time. They walk in um, not knowing us and we see how great their potential is before they leave us at the end of the year. So that's been my mission, to empower my students to be leaders. And it's something that is my life journey to do because my mom and my father instilled that into uh, my brother and I. Now that's an incredible story. Uh, thank you for sharing that. But not only do you teach, but you mentor as well. And I can see and hear it in your voice as you sit with us today. How do you juggle? How do you keep your priorities straight? Uh, Who encouraged you? Uh, well, my mother and, and my father, and as well as I had a really great mentor when I was in school. One of my track coaches, one of the hardest days of my life is I was 15 years old and my, my father passed away. And uh, dealing with that was really tough. And I remember that next morning it, it happened. Um, I remember wanting to go to school. And mom was like, you know, you should stay here. I said, no, I'm, I'm going to go to school because my school created such a safe environment that I was able to go there and I just saw the power of this one teacher I had in particular who I went there and she found out about it by second period and I stayed in her office pretty much the whole day and she just talked with me, she just sat there, she listened to me. But after that day forward, she stayed with me and to this day she's still my mentor and she was also able to be there for me uh, when I won Teacher of the Year. So the contribution that she uh, had in my life and the impact that she made in my life, once again, I, I make it my mission to do it for my students. I feel like when we, when we learn something, you know, we have to teach it. And I learned being a good mentor for my parents and a great teacher that I had. So now I have to go in and teach my students that. And what I'm doing with my groups that I have is I'm empowering them to be leaders so they as well can make a contribution to their community and not focus on the struggles in their life. So there's a lot of work to be done. And uh, I work tirelessly trying to, you know, impress it onto my students as well as my faculty. And you take the, the teaching to a whole different level. It's yes, not just about getting students ready for the star. It's about getting to the emotion and the, the, the heart of the student. Yes, and we need more teachers like that. So now that you have become AISD's Teacher of the Year, what's next for you? Well, what I would like to do with the mentor program I have at Webb, it's called FORCE. It stands for Focusing on Reaching Children Everywhere. And I started the mentor program about six years ago. And it was because I saw a need with our, our kids that were, you know, having issues at school or self-esteem issues in different areas. I created this group of putting these kids' names down on spreadsheets, going to PLCs and working with teachers to go and create support systems through teachers in schools. It's a 30-minute commitment once a week. So the teachers were able to buy into it. It wasn't a lot of time. 
and what's been doing it for six years, I started off with only having a handful of teachers, you know, maybe about three or four teachers and about a handful of kids, maybe about four or five. And now it's expanded to having over 56 teachers as well as staff members, um, as, long, uh, as well as our, our SRO, our librarian, everyone taking an invested interest and, and having over like 130 students in the program. So what I would like to do with this platform with being Teacher of the Year is I want to be able to move this forest mentoring program throughout the district. Because I feel like I don't care what area you're in, all kids need support. And I want to try to really support the social and emotional aspect mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. for, for our kids. And with me having this vision back in 2010, it was I was losing sleep over starting this mentoring program. I would wake up, write stuff down. I said, what if it doesn't work? You know, what if the teachers don't buy into it? And then one thing I've learned as a mom has taught me is that you know when you're doing what's best for kids, you know, and you're doing the work um, that God wants us to do, you know, th great things are going to happen. And with that being said, it was a three or four kids at the beginning of the year, and all of a sudden, the, over the years, it's expanded. And um, I've been talking to some other administrators at other campuses about putting it to their schools, and they're really excited about it. But I want to move it vertically as well, so not just the middle school kids are supporting, now those kids are on my list. They move to high school and have that same support system. So. It's a vested interest that I really want to get people involved in our schools and as a teacher, empowering throughout um, the campus. So we know that you have built these solid relationships with your students, being a mentor, and evidently with your staff, your coworkers. Explain the importance of having the, the knack and the tenacity to be able to build these bonds, these relationships. How do you go about that? Uh, I always, one thing I, I make it on my mission to do when I'm walking the hallways, I always speak to every teacher. I'm, I'm in their Absolutely. classrooms. Absolutely. I, I don't believe, I believe that it's just not about me just, I just teach physical education so I'm just in the gym area. I feel like I need to be campus wide and what could I do to contribute to my teachers. So I'm in those classrooms, I'm talking to those kids and with the mentoring program, I'm able to know every student on that mentoring list and also know, find out, okay, what do they need help with grade wise or behavior wise? You know, how can I support that teacher? And teachers are emailing me about coaching. I'm having trouble with this kid. How can you help support that? When these teachers take on with being a mentor, it helps with their classroom management because these kids see a bigger investment with mm -hmm. just you mm -hmm. just teaching. You know, that's one thing about the kids because sometimes they feel like, well, your teacher, that's just your job. You're required to do that. But when you invest in mentoring outside of what you're required to do to our yes. children, it makes a big impact and a big difference. And teachers are starting to see and understand that. And one thing, it's twofold for our teachers because now they're starting to understand that, you know what? This child is, you know, a benefit to my life, and it's also, you know, making me step up and, you know, just do so much more for my students. And it's a great thing to see my teachers coming to me sometimes with tears in their eyes about what the program has meant to them and how they're able to reach this student on a different level, how we're really, really to get some real insight on trying to support these students. It's all about our, our students achieving um, success academically and well as socially, emotionally. And if I could have a role in doing that, empowering my teachers to be a resource of support for them, well, that's what I'm going to make my mission um, every day to do. Oh, you're amazing. <laughs> like, right now, I'm just, like, amazed at all the things that you do. And what would you tell the person coming after you at your, at your campus? If they're candidates for Teacher of the Year, they win Teacher of the Year, how do you encourage them because you seem to be taking it all in stride. Um, I would tell them that the, the power of building relationships and stepping outside of your classroom. The great thing that happened um, after Salute was that a couple teachers talking to me about things that they wanted to start. They felt inspired and encouraged. Mm -hmm. And what I do is I tell them, you know, start small, you know, start small. You know, do what you can, do the best you can, and also collaborate with others. Because one thing you'll find out when you start walking around the campus, and I'll tell the teachers is getting into this role is that everybody wants to help. They just need to know how to help. And if you have an avenue where you have the vision to go and help, empower them to do more, well, then you do that. So I think with teachers coming on board uh, after me, I think it's something to get in the mindset of just like building and working together. You know, it really does always say it takes a village, mm -hmm. it takes a campus, and it takes us all having the vision to our kids' success. And that's one thing I love about AISD and Dr. Cruz's vision is reinventing the mm -hmm. urban experiences because there's a, over 130 campuses uh, in AISD and just taking an approach that looks different from maybe south or north, but all of it's about our students being successful in various innovative ways. Absolutely, and, um, yes. It's, it's something that I want our teachers to really understand and I want our kids to really understand as well. Share the secret of how you don't become flustered in tough situations because you're you're, you're flowing right now, so uh -huh. how, do, how do you keep that going? Uh, faith, um, and then with well, my family, the foundation my family set for me, you know. 
uh, we had a lot of hardships in my life growing up and even having the hardship of even being adopted and having all those kind of things and learning that these things that you go through in your life help to make you stronger, you know. You know, finding a message through the mess or finding a, um, a testimony through the test in your life, you know, finding strength through struggles. The things that my mom imparted into me growing up and the wisdom that she had with her being older and being around her friends, it creates me centered and grounded in, in a foundation that things may get rocky, but you stay steady in your mindset and what you want and your vision stays clear for our kids and success is going to happen. That's a good thing. I'm happy to hear that you're you're talking to other campuses and looking at expanding um, the FORCE program yes. throughout the district. How would you encourage other educators who may not be where you are mm -hmm. as far as the social-emotional aspect of educating students to really think about the whole child and how mentoring can help with classroom management and other aspects of growth within the child? Well, one thing I'm working on right now with my teachers since they've been in the program for some years is actually I'm shooting a video with having my teachers to talk to other teachers about it because the hesitation is will be one thing, will be a time thing, will be one more thing for me to do. Um, and these teachers are on tape and the testimonies are my teachers and students. Talking to those teachers encourage them to mentor and what it looks like on our campus and what it looks like for their campus. So I have them reaching out. I'm also creating um, a PowerPoint as well to start getting out to the campuses. And I would love to be invited. And I already have some invitations to the campuses to come talk about the mentoring program. But I want to be able to talk to these teachers and then I want to be able to have a representative on each campus that we get to meet every mm -hmm. so often mm -hmm. to build inside their schools because the mentoring program at my school may look different in the school over here. Mm -hmm. But the main gist of the program is for our student success, you know, helping to close the achievement gap. Um, supporting social emotional learning. So all those different components all together, us working together, um, I think can, can, can breed for success. And what about the administrator buy-in? We've been okay. talking about teachers, yes, but what about the administrators? <laughs> so initially when I started this program six years ago, um, Dr. Garcia was our principal then and I approached him about the program and he was, he was on board with it. And not only was he on board with it, he came and he joined the program, okay. which is great. And what I do with my teachers is I give them shout outs when they join the mentoring team, and that helps with a lot of the buy-in as well. And um, I'm always getting them encouraging every Monday I send out the list. Um, and from the administrator pers perspective, it was something where he was excited to be a part of. And then we had our new administrator come on, Mr. Sanchez, and he bought into it and he has a lunch bunch that he meets with. And like I told the teachers, mentor could look in different forms. You can mentor two or three kids, maybe one kid, however you want to do it. But with the lunch bunches, he's able to go and meet with these four or five kids and spend 30 minutes once a week to do this. That's a lunch period, you know, mm -hmm. and everyone has to have lunch and that's what we're doing. And um, it was very important to get the administrator to buy in. And I've had both administrators um, totally support me 100%, okay. which has been great. Also, um, my APs um, over the years, and the APs currently still support the mentoring program. Like I said, our SRO last year, um, I had the bookkeeper you know, in the program. So it's everyone understanding and taking an interest on our kids being successful. So it doesn't matter our title, you know, it's all about we all have the same goal in mind and that's the main thing. You know, it doesn't matter my, matter my title, it's all of us doing our part. So me being teacher of the year is, is such a blessing and a great honor, but with that comes a lot of responsibility. And, uh, and I don't take it lightly, you know, and I, and I try my best to encourage my kids to be leaders as well. I can see why she teach you the year. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, we have enjoyed hearing about your program and your experience and especially your story that has brought you where you are today. But unfortunately, we've run out of time. Oh. Um, so, <laughs> you know, Quivette, we've enjoyed having you on our show and we look forward to seeing bigger and better things you know, superintendent maybe down the road, you know, you never know. <laughs> Sorry, Dr. Cruz. Um, <laughs> so we'd like to thank Ms. Quivette Terrell for joining us, AISD's Teacher of the Year. We will be right back. Thank you for staying with us for Breaking Down the Barriers. Now that we've heard from Quivette Terrell, Teacher of the Year on working with social emotional learning, we're going to go into the testing area of education with the Director of System-Wide Testing, Mr. Chris Cordell. Thank you, Chris, for joining us today. It's my pleasure to be here. Thank you for having me. So most parents know that testing begins in the third grade, and it's called the STAR test now. Can you tell us a little bit about what STAR test is? Sure. Uh, well, STAR stands for State of Texas Assessment of Academic Readiness. 
And as you said, beginning in third grade, students um, take a variety of tests. Um, students in grades three through eight take a math and reading assessment every year. And uh, additionally, in fourth grade and seventh grade, they will take a writing test. In fifth grade and eighth grade, they will also take a science test. And then in eighth grade, they will also take a social studies test. Mm. And then in high school, there are five EOC assessments that must be passed for a student to get a diploma from a Texas public high school. Those are English one, English two, algebra one, biology, and US history. What does EOC stand for? EOC stands for end of course exam. End of course. Wow, that's, that's a lot of testing, Chris. That is a lot of testing. Um, our students are being tested every year, it looks like. From third grade to 11th grade, essentially. Pretty much. Yes. And, and so we know that um, we hear a lot of complaints, especially in Texas, about the number of tests that are given and therefore we're teaching just so students can pass the tests. Do you have any? Well, I certainly hope that's not the case. Right. I certainly hope that we are teaching the curriculum that the state has provided and that the test just happens to come around once a year. Um, and you know, in most grades, it's, it's two tests to three tests. Eighth grade gets it yeah, with four three. tests. Right. Um, but it is, over the course of a student's career, there is a significant amount uh, of testing. But the tests do provide valuable information to campuses and teachers and the district on um, how students are doing. Parents can use the information to um, assess whether or not their student is ready for the next grade level. Um, and it helps the district focus resources in places and areas of need. What happens if students don't pass some of these tests in the earlier grades? So there are only two grade levels where not passing the test will affect promotion to the next grade level. Okay. Um, in fifth grade and eighth grade, mm -hmm. um, the legislature passed what is called the Student Success Initiative, or SSI. Okay. And so in fifth and eighth grade, students must pass the math test and the reading test in order to be promoted to the next grade level. Now, during those years, there are multiple opportunities to pass that test. There are two opportunities within the school year, um, and then there's an additional opportunity in the summer um, after some, um, some interventions have taken place to help the student be successful on the assessment. And when they don't pass, I assume that they are given tutoring or something to help better prepare? Correct. By law, districts are required to provide, okay. um, to provide intervention to help the student prepare to, to pass that assessment. Okay. Now, in those years, um, the final decision on whether or not the student is promoted to the next grade level is ultimately determined by what's called a grade placement committee, okay. which is made up of a campus administrator, um, the teacher for that grade, subject area and the parent of the student. So that's the difference between promotion and placement. That's correct. To the next grade level. Okay. Um, well, I just feel a little lost because testing seems to be well over my head for our children. I think that we do an extreme amount. Beginning of the year, middle of the year, end of the year. Do you handle those as well as the STAR? I do not handle the, the, the MOI tests, is what they're called here in the district, the benchmark testing. Those come through a different department. Than, although my, the name of my department is system-wide testing, we technically don't handle every assessment. What my department does handle is all of the state and federally required assessments um, that districts are required to provide. So STAR is the main focus of that. Um, we also handle TELPASS, which is a federally required mm -hmm. test for English language learners. Um, we also handle NAEP, which is also known as the Nation's Report Card. Um, that is facilitated through my office. Um, credit by exam is facilitated through my office, which is also required by state to offer it um, to students who um, are attempting to get credit by exam. What does NAEP stand for? NAEP is the National Assessment of Education Progress. And mm -hmm. Austin ISD is what's called a trial urban district. So it's known as a TUDA. So in odd number of years, a TUDA, T-U-D-A, T -U -D -A. Okay. trial urban <laughs> district assessment. Now, it's a funny name to say that for sure. Uh, so in odd number of years, um, Austin is oversampled for the nation's report card. 
Um, and the benefit to that is that we get district level data back to compare to the, the 20 other TUDAs around the country and to the country itself. So there are 21 TUDAs total in the country and Austin is um, one of those. Does that benefit us budget wise? No. Oh, well, then I that, can't see a need for it. <laughs> except for the, that participation helps, the, getting district level data back helps to compare ourselves to the rest of the country and we, we look very good compared to the rest of the country. Uh, NAEP results were released recently and um, we were in the, we were one of the top performing districts in the country. How long have you been the director of system-wide testing? This is going into my third year of being the director of system-wide testing here in Austin ISD. So how, what have you seen change? Have you seen growth in the last three years since you've been in this position? In, in the, testing? With, with the STAR test, the scores, are they improving? Well, across the state, the, st st the scores are rather flat. Um, Austin ISD has seen some improvements in some areas, as many districts have. Um, there's still work to be done to, to continue to move our students forward. If a parent is concerned about their preparation, their child's preparation for the STAR or any of these tests, where can they go to find information to help improve their study skills and enhance what they're learning in the classroom? Well, I would certainly start with talking to the teacher, the classroom teacher, to, to find out what's being worked on in the classroom and, and what's available um, from the instructional side of things. Um, additionally, the website for the Texas Education Agency, uh, tea.texas.gov, um, has a myriad of resources specific to the STAR. There are um, release STAR assessments on there, so parents can see what types of questions are asked on the STAR test. Um, they can see what performance has been like across the state. They can even see what performance has been like in Austin ISD. <coughs> Excuse me. That's, that's good to know that there are tests available or prior tests available that parents can actually look at and mm -hmm. see the types of questions and possibly the answers, I assume. Yes, the answers are there as well, yes. Ma so that they can help their student prepare. What about um, students who may be um, in special education programs? Do they have to take the STAR also? Yes, there are no, um, there are very few exemptions um, from participating in, in the STAR test and that is a, a federal requirement. Um, However, for students who may be in special education or in, or in 504 ELL students um, or even general education students um, who have needs, there are accommodations that are available okay. um, on the state assessment. Um, for testing purposes, we are governed by what's called the Accommodations Triangle, which is um, put out by the Texas Education Agency every year, and it has a list of accommodations um, as well as the eligibility requirements that students have to meet in order to receive those accommodations on the state assessment. Um, additionally, there are um, there is another test version that has embedded accommodations. Um, it was new last year. It's called Star Star A, which stands for Star Accommodated. Mm -hmm. um, it is an online test that has um, quite a few built-in features that can't be provided in a paper and pencil assessment that the, that the online system provides. Is that better for the children who are having to take this test? So it depends on the student. It depends on the student and their needs. Okay. Um, in order to take the test, there are eligibility requirements that must be met, and um, the campus would determine whether or not the student meets those eligibility requirements or not. Um, and in many cases, uh, I think that the, the accessibility features and the accommodations that are provided um, do help the students. When a campus doesn't meet the requirements, what's, what's the result? What's the after effect? For, you mean for accountability purposes? Yes, what, the accountability. I mean, I've, I, not, I'm not supposed to talk about myself, but I've, I've worked several years on campuses where they have not met the accountability and then there have been big issues. Let us, the audience, know the reflection of, of those results. So, Carolyn Hanchen, who's the director of accountability, is would be better served to, re to respond to that specifically, but the, the assessment results, which come from my department essentially since we're in charge of administering the assessment, are, are, do play a big part in the accountability calculations. Um, as far as the ramifications of not meeting certain uh, requirements in the accountability system, uh, um, it's kind of a stepladder of interventions that take place, and depending on how far along you are on, or how far up you are on that ladder, um, 
Up or down? Up or down. That depends. <laughs> that, that, that makes, that makes the uh, determination of what, what requirements there are for the campus. But um, after several years of not meeting accountability uh, standards, then they, I mean, there are possibly some severe consequences. So it sounds like your office is responsible for the administration of the tests. Correct. STAR tests, TELPOS, um, and credit by exam. Correct. Are there other, do you interact at all with families when they have questions? I receive a lot of questions from families, especially in the spring when we get into the, when the testing cycle comes. Um, I field a lot of questions from parents asking basic questions like I'm answering here today. What is STAR? Why, do, why does my student have to take mm -hmm. it? Um, what happens with the results, th those types of things. But yes, I do field a lot of questions from parents um, in relation to the STAR test. Credit by exam is also another big area where we field a lot of questions. And um, I have an excellent team um, in the Department of System Wide Testing that um, does an excellent job uh, of handling those types of things. And students who are interested in credit by exam, those students are the ones who want to see if they can test out of taking a class. Is that correct? Well, there's actually um, several areas where credit by exam can help. If, if it's a student who has maybe not met the requirements of the course, that they've taken the course, but they didn't pass the course and don't mm -hmm. have the credit, um, but they feel like they could pass the credit by exam uh, assessment and receive credit, they can do it that way to, okay. to recover the credit. Um, we also have credit by exam for um, courses without prior instruction. So students who feel like um, they have enough knowledge in a content area where they could pass a test without having to actually take the course, okay. um, they can do that as well. Um, we have limitations right now on those. We, we can't offer the credit by exam without prior instruction for EOC courses right now because there are state okay. regulations around those. Thank you for joining us today, Chris. Thanks for having me. It was my pleasure to be here. Mm -hmm. We appreciate you. Breaking Down the Barriers is an initiative of the Austin Independent School District. This program was created to bring you information on resources, programs, and district initiatives. The parents, students, and community members in Austin benefit from the programming, and we hope you continue to join us. Thank you and have a good day.